Coming up, Cam Thomas is saying all the right things to make fans think he could be the new leader in Brooklyn. Plus, Jalen Wilson can't stop, won't stop lighting the summer league on fire. We break it all down coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, uh, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Norrie. I'm Adam Marbrick. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. All summer long, FanDuel is hooking up customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. And Doug... While we will talk about the human torch Jalen Wilson that will not stop at Summer League right now, leading an overtime victory last night for the Brooklyn Nets, there's also some really, I'm going to say, impressive responses from Cam Thomas as he, uh, uh, Michael Scotto, highlights over the Summer League where he was in attendance on the sidelines for some of these games as well. And it does shed a new, maybe leadership kind of light on a kid that finally is front and center for the Brooklyn Nets roster. As we say with interviews, man, it's hard to say the right, it, it, you know, it's uh, it's easy to say the right thing, but you can sometimes say the wrong thing. But Cam Thomas said all the right stuff yeah. um, in this interview with Michael Scotto w- over at Hoops Hype. Scotto uh, really dialed in with the Nets for a long time. I mean, he's a national, re- he's a national sort of reporter slash newsbreaker, but he, um, you know, he has, he's been able to really pretty accurately report and had a lot of ins with the, with the Brooklyn Nets over the years. Great interview. I definitely suggest we'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, definitely yeah. suggest going over and reading it um, just because it, it's a nice, it's always nice to read your, your guys saying, saying the right thing. And Cam Thomas, when it came to his sort of perspective leading into this season, this is kind of all the stuff you wanted to hear. We will we'll go through some of the quotes on a specific sort of quote by quote basis, but on a high level macro sense of like sort of where Cam Thomas sees his position on the team, where he sees his position on the court, what are things he's trying to improve on and sort of get better at going forward. I mean, these are for sure all the things you want to hear. Obviously, the uh, the devil's in the details when it actually comes onto the court, but I think we saw stuff from her late in the season that makes you believe that this has been the case. So I, this yeah. interview was really, really encouraging, I think, from a Nets perspective and a Cam Thomas perspective uh, specifically. And I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead. There's a lot of great questions and answers here from Cam Thomas when it comes to his game, areas he wants to work on, thoughts on Mikhail Bridges, on Noah Clowney, on Jalen Wilson, on all these guys. Even Dariq Whitehead put in there as well. But if you go if you go down a little bit deeper into it, is there anything else he was asked Nets fans should look out for who follows you or the team? And this response from Cam Thomas of, we're not going to treat this as a rebuild, as people say we are doing, we're going to go out there and compete and try to win every game. If we lose, we lose. We're going, we're not going to go out and throw games. We're going to compete hard. It's going to be an entertaining, exciting with good young Nets basketball. I can't wait to see it. Even though you and I both agree that this roster is going to be a team that's going to lose a lot of basketball games. There is something to having a young player who has had some ups and downs, not for his, for himself, but from a organizational perspective, has had some ups and downs when it comes to what the role was going to be and whether or not you were going to be treated like a first round pick with the opportunity to be a core piece for them. I, I like it. This is like brand messaging. And he goes, yeah, okay. Like if we lose, we lose. But it's not going to be this tankathon, trust the process, Philadelphia 76ers style. There's a lot of young players. We'll talk about some of the other guys too that are going to be capable of showing you that it's a bright future. And I think that there is a difference there between different versions of rebuilds where the Nets, as we'll talk about some of the guys in summer league as well, have young pieces that are, we think going to be real critical parts of this team going forward. So it's easy to kind of, I think, send a put out a positive message here from Cam Thomas and say, yeah, we're going to be fun. If we lose, we lose, but we're going to go out there and give you something to be excited about, at least on a nightly basis. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a misconception around tanking is that, Especially if you haven't seen it put into practice, um, which you know, just just if you have, if you're a Nets fan and don't watch a lot of other stuff, is that is that that it like is a losing because of lack of effort? That's actually really not the case. Usually, it's not yeah. a lack of effort thing. It's usually just a lack of talent thing, right? Like, and it's and it's sort of strategic mismanagement of talent, 
especially at the most opportune times where like those losses kind of where you want the losses to stack. You rarely see a lack of effort on the court by players. Sometimes you can, but right. there's definitely situations where it's full max effort. It just, you just don't have the dogs like to be able to really do it. And so I think like this and understanding the differences there is really important. And I think Cam Thomas like sort of espouses this in this interview is that, Look, we're not going to lose. Obviously, good. No one's expecting the players to go out there and just kind of roll over right. and, and take an L. These guys are going to compete. There's always stuff to be worked on. There's always stuff to improve. The idea here is, hey, we are not going to be bad forever, so I better get better now. When you have those attitudes around sort of player development, then one, tanks can be relatively short. Two is you come out of it with like real pieces in a real system that you can grow on once the requisite talent sort of catches up to everybody else. So yep. I think he kind of understands that. I think these are all the right things to say along those lines. Hey, we're not going to go out and lose. We're going to play really hard. We're going to improve. I understand sort of the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is yeah, not a very good team, but that doesn't mean we can't get better individually. So as like the rising tide raises all ships later, I think like these were, these are really encouraging quotes along those lines. And even when he asked about inside the locker room, is it motivating, you know, pulling out just another little thread here. I wouldn't say it's motivating. I'd say it's more just that we've got to go out and prove it at the end of the day. I don't think anybody in the locker room is going to lose every game. If they do so, that's a big problem. And I, I, I'll, I'll yeah. leave the rest of it to the side here because these two combined are also a lot to me about something. Frankly, no one was asking him these questions anyway, a year ago or two years ago, but now it's that you are being asked these questions. Why? Because you're the best player on this basketball team now. And the question, I think, when we think about growth of players and the development of players, listen, ultimately, you need to be really good on the court. And you could probably give all of the worst answers in interviews, and it wouldn't make a difference if your value on the court was as such. But for Cam Thomas, this is an opportunity for him to be the leader in this room. Even with veterans still on this roster, like Dennis Schroeder, right, who only came in last season, Cameron Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith may or not be here long-term. We don't know. He is in this role. And even put in Nicholas Claxton as well, which we've heard from him a little bit over the course of the summer, finally gets his new contract. But all these things keep pointing towards Cam Thomas with these young players. It's your opportunity also to be the vocal leader and a tone setter. So these are like these are some cliche things. Now we're going to get to, in a second, some of the on-court stuff and areas that we believe he can improve. But as Doug says... You can say the wrong things and get beat up for it in interviews, but when you say the right stuff, you usually don't get a ton of pats on the back. He did exactly that, so it's a really good sign from Cam Thomas. Let's talk about his on-court game, getting the ball in his hands, maybe being a true point guard, and what that would mean for the Brooklyn Nets all coming up here in just one moment. All right, before we get to that, tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Look, you love sports. I love sports. We love them so much. We never want them to stop. Look, NBA is in the offseason. You can still get in some NBA action over on FanDuel. You get MLB action every single day because they're back from the all-star break, baby. So they're going to be in full swing here for the rest of the summer. Uh, this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Maybe you want to head on over to FanDuel right now. You heard those Tam, uh, Cam Thomas quotes, and you think, you know, FanDuel, Re Book Brooklyn Nets, regular season wins over 19 and a half because Cam Thomas is the new encore general for your <laughs> Brooklyn Nets. Let's get Woo! the over on FanDuel right now. He said all the right stuff. We're going to we're gonna go with our gut on this one. That's exactly where you want to be on FanDuel. Head on over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so as we continue along today's Locked On Nets episode, going to be talking about Jalen Wilson, overtime game winner, not from the outside, even though he continued to be absolutely on fire with his perimeter shooting. Is that changing our opinion about where he is as we head into this upcoming season? But continuing to pull on this Michael Scotto interview with Cam Thomas, there, there's a few other things that I like here. I do want to get to his quotes about Ben Simmons because I actually think there, there is something telling in the way that he answered those questions. But the other part being after moving on from Mikhail Bridges, what does it mean? And, and you started to mention it there. Maintaining what I did last year, but increasing it more, Thomas said. I want to go into more of a leadership role. That's what we're seeing here in these responses. I've been on this team second longest behind Nick Claxton. I'm going into my fourth year, and he just finished five years. More of that leadership role trying to lead the guys. There's other mentions here about where he wants to expand his game and specifically around on ball. Scotto mentions you've increased your assist numbers as well 
as you've gone through your young career. What do you think that we can zero in our attention coming into this season? Because I believe so and expect Cam Thomas to get the opportunity, the full opportunity to showcase that he's capable of being the lead point guard and table setter facilitator and also elite scorer for the Brooklyn Nets. Well, the opportunity is going to be there because when you're the best scorer on your team by like an absolute country mile, which he is right now, you, the team will kind of go by the way he goes because he's just going to have, even as, even if you weren't the play point guard specifically by definition, the ball is going to be in his hands. Oh, I mean, when we look at time of possession at the end of the season, I, if he's not the runaway favorite here, I, I would be shocked, right? So he's going to have the chance to do it. I think at that point, it's going to be uh, sort of a decision on his part, sort of like how far he wants to take it. Because I think we already know ball in his hands, he can score. Is it? But is it going to be ball in his hands, he can score other four guys watching, which it has been at times? Right. Or is it going to be sort of like last season where it's read and react? You're seeing some blitzes. You're getting out of it quick. There's you are running some pick and roll. He tried to get some lob game going later in the season. It had mixed results, but that's okay. Like we were really encouraged just to kind of see him try it. This leads me to believe, like the that the way he's talking now is that you know he says I'm I want to show that I'm more than just a scorer. I started getting into that role uh, to start the year. Um, or I feel like going into that role to start the year will be much better because I can do it for a whole season. I mean, that's a clear to me recognition of sort of a change that was made by him that we all saw with our own eyes, right? Like we we all saw it later on in the season. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I'm not going through specifically, but I can just remember commenting a lot more, be like, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, like, that yeah. was nice. We made a lot of comments like that later in the season, just things after having watched. I mean, we've watched every single minute of Cam Thomas NBA basketball, right? So you just know the things that you start to see that appear to be different. He clearly knows it also, obviously. And the recognition that those things could be more part of his sort of metagame going forward, I think we're just going to see it a lot more. And the great news is, and I think we saw this last year, is the uh, the ability to try it and fail is very important at this stage. Like You have to be in a place where it's like, hey, it's more important than you try and fail than don't try at all. Yeah. And that's like, you know, it can sound like cheesy, like Tony Robbins stuff here, but it's, it's true. And on teams like this, this is where it can happen. Hey, we tried running, you know, you know, a bunch of five, one pick and roll, you know, this game, it didn't really work. That's great. We just tried it. Right. I think yeah. those are the things uh, or one five pick and roll. Uh, those are the things that like we can hopefully see going forward, and that seems like it's on his mind. Yeah, with with, with low season expectations in terms, I mean, from the outside looking in, as we're hearing him say, as young players, they're not thinking about it that way. But when you don't have the pressure of, hey, we're fighting for the play in tournament spot under Jordy Fernandez, who I'll just mention in passing, Thomas says, very smart guy, very excited to work with him, you know, detail oriented, good for the young team. It's hey. This is what we're trying to accomplish in game X, right? Go out and try to accomplish these specific play designs, this read and react that we want to have on the offensive end. If it goes horribly and you have a turnover, that's okay. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe his turnover numbers are on the rise for the early portion of the season because he's trying to do certain things, and maybe not only him, but also the young team around him are going to have to do a little bit of adjusting as they get the early days of the season underway. So all of those things are positive. The other couple of elements of this that I really Wait, love real quick. Are, before yeah. before you get into the I just before you move on to this one thing very quickly about the because you make a great point about the turnovers that I just didn't want to gloss over. It's a really good point about turnovers. Sometimes always stop me when I'm making a great point. And I someone just said this and I I, sh- I can't remember who it was. I, I but someone said this about NFL quarterbacks and Priscilla maybe and was saying how sometimes if you look at NFL quarterbacks interception rates, if it goes up, it's sort of, sort of encouraging based on their profile because it means they were taking lots of shots, right? It's like yes, it's like depending on their just watched this the other day. Yes. Depend, depending on their uh, depending on their sort of like overall profile, if they have a lot of interceptions, it means that uh, it's like probably not the worst thing. It means they were really pushing into 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 other places. I, I think there's like it might be analogous to what we could see with Tampa Thomas, where if we saw the turnovers increase, if it was a byproduct of trying different parts of the game, which is like more distribution i think that we shouldn't be discouraged by that so sorry to cut you off there but no, no. i think that's a really good point about the turnovers it was a classic and inside of that example it was a classic comp where it was you know if it's daniel jones that's increasing turnovers i'm not so excited because he hasn't shown that the other area is going to grow the deep ball accuracy the ability to read and yeah. react to what defenses are doing i know we're going a little nfl centric here 
but vice versa. It's, but if Patrick Mahomes throws a few more interceptions, guess yeah. what? I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the bad because I know what the good is and I know where that trajectory is going. He's pushing. So he's pushing into high, high risk, high reward scenarios. Yeah. And like, I, I think we should prove capable of that. You yes. Know? Yeah. So anyway, sorry to, sorry to cut you off in the next point, but I thought that was just like a good, like good place to jump in because I think it'd be good to know that kind of going into this season. So there's a couple of other things. No, it was, it's a good point by me being highlighted by Doug. We always love to work that way yeah. on the podcast, but there's a couple of other things <laughs> that were notable here. One. So there's the contract extension piece, but he was asked about uh, Nick Claxton getting resigned. What does it mean for the team? Just noteworthy. It says, yeah, it's good. It gives us stability as a team. We've basically got the same team just without Mikhail Bridges. And we added three players. It's good to have that continuity and that stability because the last few years, I've had a different team every single year. It's crazy. And I thought I thought about that for a minute. As a young, developing, elite scoring talent, when you look back over the last few seasons, you go, oh, right, guy who can't, who they won't allow to get on the court because it's superstar driven, bring in another superstar. Okay, get rid of that superstar, bring in another former star who's kind of injured and can't really keep himself on the court. We're talking about Ben Simmons here too. And all those iterations then, Oh, well now it's the Mikhail Bridges show. Now you got to blend in with him and he's kind of the face of this team. And after all of that, you're like, can I just, can we just have it where when I step onto the court, I know one, what my role and expectation is. And then also a handful of guys that I know what their role is supposed to be around me as well. So that, I mean, it's always interesting to remind the fan base about when we think of, Oh, the organization's done such a terrible job managing his development. It hasn't been perfect. He should have been on the court a lot sooner. But the organization has gone through a lot of change in a short amount of time. Not so his fourth made, coach. Yeah, They're yeah. on his fourth coach yes, in this time. Yeah, that's in this, in this say, time too. Like, yeah, also, yeah, I've been through a dozen coaches. And NFL ties again, right? We always say quarterbacks are going to struggle when you keep changing the system. Well, okay, what happens to a young NBA player who wants to develop other areas of his game but goes through coach after coach after coach? It's like, I don't know, maybe you, maybe not. Come see me. I don't know if you're going to have a role here. So that part I thought was interesting to note as well. Yeah, look, there's a, it, it, is a, it is a good reminder about the massive upheaval, the uh, multitude of problems, like the just will they or won't they situation here. I mean, frankly, even, even if you wipe away all of – even if you wipe away all the turmoil on the team, which has been borderline historic, yeah. the um in the Thank in the you. worst kind of in, in the worst <laughs> ways, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> like the bad it's kind of history, not the good kind. Shoot. Um, just a just a turmoil around will will they won't leave, won't they with him like with him they, they the it was always you know a yo yoing effect of is he gonna play is he gonna start. Does he score 40 points and then get benched? Like, even just him, it was unclear. Does he need to be catch about, and like, shoot? Does he need to be on ball attacking? The whole, yeah, yeah, everything. So yeah. It's a good, I'm glad he brought it up. And, you know, by extension, you brought it up because we're all just, you know, as we if we can all point things back to you, that's that's yeah. sort of the goal here. If we're doing it um, right. But the <laughs> the it's a it's a good reminder that he, they, they, this has been one of the least stable on-court organizations in recent memory. Yeah, and it's going to be nearly impossible for a guy to like develop at their fullest if no one knows who's coming or going. So hopefully now with some stability here, even in a sort of a losing environment, like there's lots of places to win, and I think like we could probably see that more from him. Coming up here in a second, man, we want to get to Jalen Wilson in this summer league game, but there's a few more very interesting responses here, including Cam Thomas answering about contract extension talks. We'll get into that to close out the show in just one moment. All right, so as we wrap up our Friday edition, we remind you, get us over on X at Doug Nori, at Adam Armbrecht, and at Locked On Nets as well. Cam Thomas, great interview. Michael Scotto, obviously, pulls not only in the NBA, but sometimes he drills down into the Brooklyn Nets landscape. Asked about the contract extensions, Cam Thomas said, you definitely think about it, but it's not something I'm pushing for. Whatever happens with the organization happens. I cannot control that. The only thing I control is going out there and playing best basketball I can play. That's very generic, I understand, but... I'm not really pressed on it. Whatever happens will happen. You never know what could happen. A few happens here. But as of right now, I'm really, I'm really not pressing on it. I want to keep improving my game to get ready for next season. One thing, the only thing I want to pull out of this is that he doesn't seem too bothered by it, mostly because he keeps playing better. So the contract will kind of sort itself out. And when we talk about the Nets needing to get to the salary floor, guess what? Cam Thomas's next contract is going to be a big part of that because he is going to get a sizable next contract from the Brooklyn Nets that'll help fill in a key category there 
when we think about DFS not being here or Cam Johnson not being here. It's I I I won't put a dollar figure on it, but he's going to make substantial money coming out of this season. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. It's not gonna be like the. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be like Emmanuel quickly, like Scotty Barnes things, like uh, contract no. extensions. Um, no. like I don't. I don't think the numbers are gonna be there for him. He's clearly gonna get paid, so I think that there's probably not a ton of worry there. I don't think the number reaches like these like huge rookie scale kind of stuff, or um, you know, our first extension, first contract extension, like real real money, um, levels. But he probably is in a better spot to like get paid here. I, like I think they're just going to end up doing it because, like you said, I don't think the numbers going to be crazy, but it's just going to be like, hey, you can stay in Brooklyn. We'll have the number be reasonable. Yep. You know, there's probably the game isn't perfect, but you're going to be the scorer. You're be, be like a mini face of the franchise here for a couple years at least. So I think we see some like meeting in the middle there, mm -hmm. where they don't want to like test where that no one's he's not going to want to test the waters outside of it. Because I think they're probably that could be like a little risky. I think um, so. I think that there's probably some meeting in the middle here on a contract extension. And my guess is that they have probably already talked about this. And my and knowing from this, like reading this answer was probably like we might be closer than you think. Yeah. And like, and it's just like you know, the we're just getting down to sort of brass tacks on it. That's my that's my take on it. And not not in dollars, not in dollars in years, but I, it feels not dissimilar to Nicholas Claxton in, in this offseason of like, yeah, we want him back. Now, there's some speculation a team could have come in, but ultimately the Nets seemed committed, going back to Jordy Fernandez's introductory press conference, of like, nope, he's one of our guys. We think he'd be defensive player of the year. We're going to get him back in here. It just it feels understood, details to be worked out, and less contentious or less concerning because Claxton was in a different spot at that point, you know, going. I think it would have been trickier for him had they had they continued the the previous path where Bridges are still on the team and they're bringing in stars. I think the extension there gets trickier because it's like we don't exactly maybe know what you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and are and you I, like a I high level? Thomas can't keep making more money if I don't get the opportunity to show what I'm worth. And like they might, there might be concerns about sort of like high level playoff production because that's what you're thinking about at that point. Not to say you can't do it, but I'm just saying like these are the things that come into the play at those at that point. Wiping a lot of that stuff away, I think, helps him. I do think it would have been more problematic had they because again, I'm not exactly sure what his his value is uh, for other teams too. So it's like was it would it be a trade piece on a rookie con on a, or on a contract extension? It's like not totally clear, and so. I think this he's just in a really good spot. I think both of them are in a really good spot for this now, which is again why I think it probably gets done. Maybe not this, maybe not right when it can, but I just think the timelines work out a little bit better for for kind of for both sides, honestly. Yeah, hundred percent. Turning so the last thing here as we will dovetail into the summer league and Jalen Wilson. Um, but if not, we'll continue to talk about him because it's been a really good summer league for him. Um, there's the one part about keeping the core together. He's asked about the young guys, says we got a really good taste, paraphrasing here, of what Noah Clowney could do. Same thing with Jalen Wilson, excited to keep working with them. He mentions Derek Whitehead, young, trying to get back, trying to get healthy. It, it does feel like there is a company line for, for Derek Whitehead in terms of how teammates talk about him, not negatively, but just where they need to go. He's excited for that. I have to, I have to put this last one in here. It's mentioned about Ben Simmons a year ago and the same type of players being here. When asked, uh, is there potential if he's healthy, but it's always been a big if. Can you count on that at this point? I thought that this was a it was a good and honest response from Cam Thomas. I count on it every year he's on the team. I'm expecting him to be healthy and be ready to play. I'm not going into every year saying he's not going to play. Never. He's on the team, and I think he's going to be healthy and play to start the year off. Whatever happens during the year happens. To start the year off, I feel like he's going to be ready to play. That last line, whatever happens, well, that's obviously pointing to, hey, if the guy can't be healthy, if the guy has another injury, if he's maybe not on this team, hey, that's what's going to happen. But I always count on it coming in. That felt like both a, a team, you know, kind of a team line on, hey, we always want to be healthy. We're, we're hoping he's there and he can contribute. We're always excited. And it also, on a personal individual level, if you're Cam Thomas, is like, yeah, if he's there, great. Also, whatever happens, happens. Because guess what? Again, I'm trying to expand my game. I'm trying to take on a bigger role here. I really can't be overly concerned about an oft injured player who now in this new rebuilding landscape is also clearly not longed for this team. 
Yeah, I think I mean this this, this kind of spoke volumes to me. I think the expectations are, are really really low. Uh, how could they not be? Um, yeah. The guy has just been injured. It's not his fault. Um, but no, no, I don't no. know how you the, the the part where we hear things like "I've been playing with him this summer. It looks better than ever." Like those those quotes are are gone, right? Yeah. Like with those things, and they're, and they're not coming back. I think that this was. I'm always up said a lot. Yeah, well, well, what are you gonna say? Like, you're yes. not gonna just throw dirt on the guy's grave, but you also can't be like, we're you know, we're counting on him. I mean, it's, it's funny too because Simmons you know. is like the perfect. It's 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 hilarious too. Because we, we got to real quick talk about Jalen Wilson here, but yes. um, Simmons is like kind of the perfect Cam Thomas running mate. Like a, a healthy Ben Simmons is actually the exact guy that would be perfect, perfect, perfect next to Cam Thomas. Um, I don't think we'll ever get that full version of it, but it is, it's a bummer. Because if you drew up in a lab a guy you would want to pair in a backcourt with Cam Thomas, like I think Simmons is the exact guy, the exact guy. Oh. Like he's he can just do all the things that Cam Thomas can't do, based on a lot of different things, and it'd be like a perfect pairing. So we're not gonna get it. Okay, real quick, uh, because we're gonna get out of here. Jalen Wilson, uh, not gonna probably be summer league MVP, but Buddy my goodness Shirley. gracious, I mean the guy has been unreal 56 percent from three 66 percent true shooting 24 uh and change points per game mm -hmm. uh i mean actually he's shooting poorly from the field if anything 43 percent. but he's been so he's been so good this is one of those again you always love with summer league to be like hey who might not belong in summer league anymore right and, like that's that's where you always want to be with summer league yeah yeah on the one, on the one, you don't, you, you want to be there. You don't want to be there on the other end, like where you're not good enough. But the other version of it, you want to be. Is, <laughs> there to be in summer league, and I mean, why is he even playing in summer league? He should be. But in college. this is like he got. I to me, he got to. You don't need to come to summer league anymore. Version, oh. and that is always the best when you see it happen because you're like, cool. The Cam Thomas, a good example too. It's like too good for summer league. Okay, yep. see it, see it never. Like th that's the end of this. <laughs> like, we won't mm -hmm. be back. Uh, and that's the, that's what Jalen Wilson's performance in, summer, uh, in Vegas has been. It, it's it's been incredible. I, I would like to nickname him the Human Torch, a la the Fantastic Four. I mean, the guy caught fire from beyond the arc. Did it in key moments. The uh, the irony that he gets the game winner in overtime by driving the lane of space that like he's still. You know, we always say he's not the fastest player, not the most athletic, but can get into some bodies, especially in summer league, and get one up there to get that final win. Nets go to three and one and could have some extra games, meaningful games, quote meaningful games in summer league to play here. It, it's been amazing, and that's his role. Like, that is his role going into the NBA, is space out that floor, go ahead and give Cam Thomas an elite shooter on the outside. And when you think about Cam Johnson still being on this team, what is the roster going to look like? If Brooklyn and Sean Marks was was going into Summer League saying, hey, Jalen Wilson, prove us all incredibly right and make it very easy to make decisions about these other players and going forward, he has answered all of those questions. I, I said, I think you did as well, a couple episodes ago, this is getting you to like, hey, sixth man, first guy off the bench energy. Like, this is really impressive stuff for him over the course of this upcoming season. Now, talk about opportunity for Cam Thomas. Jalen Wilson is going to have an 82 game season to try to make the statement. I'm even I'm even more than that for an NBA roster, whether or not he ever fully gets there. We'll see. But that's the type of run that he's had in summer league where you, you open your eyes up a little bit wider and say second round pick came in old. But now he's gone ahead and moved that floor up a little bit more, and you see if he can bump the ceiling coming into this year. Great summer league for him. It's always funny when these cases, it happens all the time, is these guys that are super old, super accomplished college players, and they drop because basically they're just older. And maybe you can't see the upside as much, right? Like you're not going to be, you know, you, you, they can't, you can't look at him and be like, he could be Tatum. Right. Like you just, or you just kind of know that by Thomas. the time you're I mean, even that, right? Like a later, you just know by the time you're a senior in high school, what you're probably not going to be. But, yeah. but what all, what always happens or often happens here is when these super accomplished guys get to this point, we do know what you are and that's really good or de yeah. like, or, you know, well above decent. And for an NBA, you know, role player, this is why these guys hit a lot is because maybe you can't dream on the upside. But you can dream on the floor, and sometimes the floor is really, really important. And I think that's where we've seen, like with Jalen Wilson, and I still think there's room for growth. Also, all right, yeah. we're gonna get out of here. We'll see how the rest of summer Ooh. league unfolds here. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people. This Jalen Wilson thing has got people talking about, like what the net starting lineup is, is presently constituted. I already said it. I, I had said maybe he's deserved. We gotta talk about that next episode. Uh, yeah, we'll next wait till next week on this because there's 
there's a lot of ways to go here, but we're having real conversations now about what the starting lineup should be to start the year. I can tell you right now what fans don't want it to be. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, coming yet. up here. <laughs> we'll talk about that coming up here probably Monday or Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Nets. Oh, you better believe it, guys. But in the meantime, I came, I saw, I conquered. Why, that is one Julia Cesar. Oh, dude, R.I.P. One of the greats. Oh, yeah. He didn't make it. <laughs> Turns he out he didn't, he didn't make it out the other side. He'll be missed. He'll be missed. All right. Um, I was the haircut. What was it saying? Oh, yeah. One of the all-time the great, great poets. Live on we'll be... haircuts, by the way, Doug, just to be totally clear. <laughs> uh, one of the all-time great poets. We're back again, Mon- uh, we'll be back again next week talking more yeah. Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball.